that's it. What many would regard as like the mecca of e-bike drivetrains, the roll-off E14. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. This bike right behind me here is the Risa Mueller Super Delight with the roll-off with the E14, kind of the latest, greatest technology, full suspension, dual battery, Bosch speed motor, all that stuff. It's pretty fantastic. I mean, it's kind of the type of bike that if somebody wants like the best option they can get for everything, they generally go with this. And I think that that's what a lot of people want, something that's the best. Many people would currently regard this as the best drivetrain available on the market currently for e-bikes. I don't know that's the best for everybody necessarily, so I'm hoping to just describe it a little bit, tell a bit of the history of the company, talk about some of the different applications, and yeah, hopefully you find it to be helpful. So Roloff, the company, had started kind of in their early 90s, and it was founded by a gentleman named Bernard Roloff. He's a German guy, as you might imagine, based on that name there. And basically, he was at Tour de France, and he was near the beach, wanted to ride a bike on the beach, riding with the traditional derailleur, you know, the chain and all the external gears and such. And he realized that this is not necessarily the best type of drivetrain to use at the beach. He started thinking of a different way to do it. I mean, at this time, there were different internally geared hubs on the market, but nothing quite with the range of what Roloff had. He kind of set out to develop something new and that's what he ended up doing. And, and he ended up creating this Roloff speed hub. At the time, they didn't have any of this electronic shifting stuff, but basically it's a 14 speed internally geared hub. It's basically the gears are inside the hub as opposed to on the outside. Normally with a chain and derailleur, like you might see on a, most mountain bikes, you'll have the gears, you have a cassette, and then you have a derailleur that basically moves the chain up and down the cassette through the gears. So two years after that experience on the beach, Bernard introduced the Roloff Speed Hub. This hub was 14 speeds. At the time, the most speeds in an internally geared hub was 12 speeds. And that was from a manufacturer called Saks. Now, Saks had uh, a couple different varieties of internally geared hubs. The 12 speed one, was heavy and it was not quite that reliable. So Roloff wanted to really take it to the next level. I should note that later Saks was bought by SRAM, uh, the same company that's around today. And they still produce some internal hubs, but it's not a very big part of their business. But that Saks hub was 3,700 grams and the Roloff hub with two additional gears was 1,700 grams and more durable. So naturally, they had something pretty special on their hands. And now it's just a matter of actually like developing the market and being able to build them up and such. It's one thing to build one prototype. It's a whole nother thing to bring it to market. But they went through, you know, various processes and they eventually, you know, really built this up to be noted as one of the more reliable hubs on the market. Since that time, been trusted by a lot of people that tour all over the world. So this roll-off hub has just really always been known as something to be very reliable, something that's relatively low maintenance. As far as maintenance is concerned, really you just need to change the oil every so often, about every 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers. But outside of that, there's not really too much that's needed on the inside of the hub. It's basically the same hub, but it just has the addition of the electronic shifting box. I could actually show you that. So that's this here. So normally you would have actually cables that come out of here, two cables just to shift it one direction or the other, but this just uses a little servo motor inside of here and it's able to shift the gears that way. And they pair that with the Bosch motor system to allow communication between the two. And it's really pretty cool because as it's shifting the gears, it actually will naturally let off the motor to allow it to easily engage. And there's other unique functions to it as well. Like for example, when you come to a stop, you can have it naturally downshift and you can have it shift to any gear between one and nine, uh, provided you set it in the display. And it shifts really fast at 180 milliseconds. There's a little bit of a learning curve in riding this system if you're not used to riding a bike with the internally geared hub. Because on a normal derailleur system, when you shift the gears, you basically just pedal and you shift as you're pedaling. Now with the internally geared hub, you actually have to let off your pedaling to allow it to disengage. You could kind of think of it like a manual transmission car, but you don't have a clutch, you're the clutch. 
So you actually have to just stop your pedaling, allow it to engage and continue going. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty natural. And actually I found that if you can shift right before the top of your pedal stroke, there's kind of a dead spot there and it ends up being that it can naturally engage and you don't really have to slow your cadence down too much. That takes a little bit of practice, but it's pretty nice once you get the hang of it. But I think that's important to note because I think that some people, if they're not so well coordinated, like myself actually sometimes, I'm not the most coordinated person, I could kind of jam myself up at times. But I think for the most part, as I, you know, I've ridden the system for a while, I've gotten pretty comfortable with it, but it does take some mental memory or kind of practice to get used to it where some other systems, maybe it might come a bit more naturally. I don't think that that's any reason really to discount it, but you know, it's something to consider. But one of the other more common internally geared hubs, because it can also handle this additional torque is Enviolo. But the Enviolo is a bit of a different experience. One, it has less range at 380% as opposed to 526%. So you don't have quite a low gear that you do on the roll off or the high gear either. But for most people, that works just fine. And then it comes down to efficiency, which a lot of people really end up dinging Enviolo on this because it is a little bit less efficient than the roll off hub. And for some people that's important. For some people, it's also just the experience of riding it where the roll off from my experience, it kind of feels a bit more like a manual transmission car when I'm like engaging the gears and like really feeling the gears where the Enviolo, it feels a bit more like an automatic transmission or even just a car without a transmission because I'm just like twisting this shifter back and forth and changing the gears that way. It really depends on like the type of experience that you're looking for. Some people really like to have that experience of like feeling the gears. For me in the city environment, I'm kind of indifferent, I guess, to some extent. Sometimes I prefer the Enviolo. I will say it's a little easier to go at a faster rate of speed with the roll off because the efficiency and the ability to have a wider range of gears. The Enviolo is a little bit heavier as well. So that could also come in as a factor as far as performance. So, you know, the efficiency and the, just the overall shifting experience, but you know, it's a really a matter of what your preference is. I did make a video about the different drivetrains if you wanted to kind of maybe dive in a bit deeper on how those things compare, or if you wanted to check out like the Enviolo video, that could be a good way to go as well. So in getting a little bit deeper into some of the technical specifications of the roll off, I mean, I mentioned the weight, it's about 1700 grams, and that's pretty light considering it's an internally geared hub. Naturally, those are a bit heavier. It also has fluid inside of it, so there's, oil actually, because it's all metal and construction. And naturally the metal as any transmission, you know, you have metal on metal gears and they kind of rub on each other. So you have to change that oil over time because the metal actually breaks down a little bit. So that's one of those maintenance things. But the nice thing is that you don't have to do it too often. And on top of that, you can either run it with the chain or in this case with the belt and that increases the maintenance intervals even further. There's also other things to consider like software updates, but with the E14, you actually use uh, a smartphone and you could connect to be a Bluetooth to update the system. I should note that when paired with the Bosch system, you wanna make sure that you're updating the bike software at the same time you're updating the hub. Cause if those are on different levels, it might, cause some challenges. The roll-off hub is considered a planetary gear system. And basically you have a variety of different gears that interact with each other and they rotate around each other and you can engage them in different ways. Now, in the normal case, you would actually engage them by shifting with the cable, but with the E14, it's using this servo motor and it's pushing into different levels of the gears and engages these different ratios. And depending on what ratio you're in, that's gonna determine what gear you're in. And the roll-off's built in all sorts of different configurations. You have a couple different colors and black and silver and red anodized. And you also have different spacing from like the normal 135 spacing to upwards of 197 for a fat tire bike. But there's really all sorts of applications that you will find this, but I think it's most commonly found for people that just want a really wide range of gears. I mean, the nice thing about it is it has a 526% gear range. The maintenance kind of matters for a variety of reasons. One, it's you know how often you have to service the bike, but two, also the cost. Now I should note that the roll-off hub does cost a significant amount of money, but if you use it a lot, you can actually realize the value there. 
if you're not using it so much, it might not be as valuable to you in that specific way. But if you don't have to maintain it that often, you don't have to pay for additional cassette or chain and that sort of stuff. But getting back into that gear range, how does that actually apply to you? Like, what's that experience like? And basically the idea is you have a very low gear for climbing really big hills and a very high gear for riding at speed or riding down a hill or in the case of an electric bike, if you have a high speed electric bike, you can really maintain a reasonable pedal cadence even at higher speeds. And the nice thing about this compared to some other internally geared hubs out there is it's very efficient. A lot of times you have a lot of energy loss inside of the hub, but the roll off, they're very efficient in that way. And it's only a very slight difference between a normal derailleur and cassette version, which is generally regarded as one of the more efficient drivetrains on the market. Another nice thing is that it's compatible with some of the more powerful motors on the market. Now the Bosch CX motor and the speed motor go up to 85 Newton meters of torque and this can actually handle upwards of 120 Newton meters of torque. So even if we see more powerful motors in the future, it might be you know, something that works there as well, which is pretty cool. And just breaking down the anatomy of the system a little bit further, you have the hub, you have the shifter box. In this case, uh, with the belt, you have what's called a snubber, and this basically holds the belt in place. And then you have the shifter up on the handlebars, and that basically allows you to shift up or down now you can shift multiple gears at the same time, which is pretty cool. So if you hold the button down, it will shift three gears at a time, either up or down. And then you also have that auto shift function. So automatically shift down, which is uh, another really nice function. And to determine which gear you're in, you're gonna see that pop up on the Bosch display. And so now that I've you know, really explained the hub and such, I wanna just explain some of the bikes that it's available on. There's a couple of different manufacturers that we work with, but there's definitely a lot more manufacturers in Europe. Now we're in the States, so I'm gonna just talk about the companies that I'm aware of, but maybe you have experience with this hub and you wanna share, or you know another bike that's out there that's great that comes with this hub, feel free to share it in the comments because I'm sure other people would like to know. From our side, one of the most common brands that we see with this hub is Risa Muir. So they offer it on almost their whole lineup with few exceptions, and that tends to be a direction that a lot of people go for. Really from our side, it's like the Enviolo and the Roloff, you know, cause a lot of people like to have the belt and they like to have the low maintenance, so. But we're starting to see it offered with more companies as well. Turn is another brand that recently introduced the GSD R14. So that has the Roloff hub as well. That's a nice option for somebody that wants a cargo bike with the E14, has the new motor and it's great for carrying kids or touring or whatever. But there's a lot of other companies in Europe. I mean, actually one of the cool things when I was going to the Eurobike show, like before the pandemic, hopefully that comes back, but I got to see a lot of these bikes and it's pretty cool to see all the companies working with this system. Some of them, it's like Koga, Stevens, Nikolai, and then like H&F Heisenberg, which is kind of like the sister company of Nikolai. Yeah, I hope you guys found this to be useful. If you want to see more videos like this, let us know. Let us know if there's another topic you'd like covered and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, take care.